Anyone who looks at this will assume I'm running Windows 7, and I mean it does make sense because I have the desktop wallpaper, the taskbar, the start menu, however it's smaller icons, if I open computer, as you can see it looks identical to Windows 7, and if I open control panel it also looks identical to Windows 7 with all the older icons and all of that, and even if I open like the action center, the sound icon, or even the network icon. Or hey, say I want to see the calendar. There's my calendar right there. And you can see even up here, the OS build identifies itself as Windows 7. However, what if I told you this is not Windows 7? Because if I do Windows key R and I type in Winver and I hit enter, Windows 17 Ultimate. Yeah, that's definitely not Windows 7. Version 21H2 and a Windows 10 build number and it identifies itself as Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC because this indeed is Windows 10 and not Windows 7. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I transformed Windows 10 to look and feel exactly like Windows 7. Also disclaimer, the Windows 17 thing was something one of my friends created, it's not part of this. So you would have to make that yourself if you really wanted to by modifying the branding, but Anyways, let's jump over to another computer to demonstrate how to do this. So we have our clean Windows 10 computer, which if you want to know what I installed, I installed Windows 10 IoT Enterprise LTSC because IoT actually has longer support than the normal Windows 10 as it goes until 2031. And it's honestly the perfect operating system to install this on because Windows 10 is ending support in 2025. So I will say this, be sure you are fully up to date on security patches. As of making this video, the latest is .4780. So make sure you have that installed before continuing. Otherwise you may run into some problems. And just to always be safe, settings, update security, click the check for updates button. Make sure you're fully up to date entirely. Even if you have optional updates, I would do the optionals too because you know, driver updates and all of that. But you can see I'm just getting a Defender update, so I am fully up to date and can proceed with this process. So after we're done here, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to this link, which I will provide in the description of this video. It is the actual Windows 10 21H2 to 22H2 to 7 transformation pack by I'm Sword Queen, which they did a really good job with this. They've updated the pack as of August 1st and they added some new changes, as you can see here. Now the download link is a mega link. This is safe, by the way. So I'm going to go to the link anyway, and we're gonna go here and download this. Now we'll say this, just proceed at your own risk. I mean, this does do system modifications, and you will have to uninstall the pack and reinstall the pack after doing Windows updates because a couple things usually break after doing so. However, the Windows updates don't break your computer as long as you're fully up to date before you install it because the ISOs tend to be very out of date. So that's why it generally breaks if you like install it on, let's say .1288 or something like that. So we're gonna download this install transformation pack. So we're gonna download that. This is the file we're gonna download. It's just right in the root here. There's readmes and other things you can check out if you really want to. I'm first gonna show you guys the optimal configuration I recommend for this for if you're actually going to be using this mainly. But if you're doing this on a computer that you just want to look like seven and you don't care if there's some issues, then you can go ahead and do all of it. But I probably will do all of it in this, but I will show you guys at first what I'm gonna select. So I'm going to pause the video and let this download and then come back when it's done. All right, guys, so you can see we have the transformation pack downloaded now. So it's just this install transformation pack icon here. So we are going to run this to install the pack onto this computer. So just give it a second. It'll say Windows protected your PC, but it's fine. So we're gonna run anyway. It may take a bit of time to open like it is right now because it is unpacking a lot of files because this is a large file. So you can see that it's finally opening now. And now we have this. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty cool. It has the credits down here if you want to look at that. 
and we have the transform now button. So we're gonna click transform now. Of course, you know, there's a license agreement and all that and the terms if you wanna read that if you want, or you can just accept it and hit next. Now here it asks you to pick your branding. So you can keep the Windows 10 branding, you can do embedded POS ready, or you could do set an alternate. For this demonstration, I'm gonna do 7 Ultimate. On my main system, I just kept the Windows 10 branding, but then I replaced the branding file. So that's why it said Windows 17 and still identified as LTSC. So I did that just in case some programs freak out, but I did have the 7 Ultimate brand and it didn't seem to cause me any problems before. I'm gonna keep the Windows 7 ribbon. Here, there's Start as Back and Open Shell. I will say this though, this is postponed, so you're gonna have to go with Start Is Back and it does contain a 30 day trial and afterwards it'll expire and have a frowny face in your start menu. So you'll either have to pay for it or just live with it like that. So then we get to the Explore. I just keep the default one and here I select both of these. So that way we, we have Automatic and the other one as well. So I just like to keep both. I hit next, and then this is the part where I'm gonna tell you what I do on mine. So I think I actually kept the seven accounts. It did mention some of the stuff is broken and doesn't work correctly. So if you would mess with that page, I would unselect it. And if I scroll through here, generally I would uncheck the seven task manager because I just prefer the Windows 10 task manager. I'd also uncheck the change when X menu because you know it's basically this menu when you right click because I find this stuff really useful. I will say this though, with this unchecked, it does look like the seven menu, but it still has all of these options for me. The legacy UAC, absolutely don't do if you use RDP because you won't be able to use it to remote into any systems if you have this selected. Um, revert the control panel, redirects. It only works in you know English, which I do live in the US, so I just select that. The network flyout, it depends because this does say that it does break some authentication protocols, so you might have issues connecting to your Wi-Fi network. However, if you're already connected to Wi-Fi or you use ethernet, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just gonna select it, but it just depends on your scenario. Patch MMC icons, it just says we'll trigger USC more. I've not noticed anything like that, so I just select it. The seven login screen, it does say it's a recreation and might contain bugs. And I remember someone said that they typed their pin wrong or something and they had to restart their whole computer. So uh, it might bug. So it might've been the pin or the password, I don't remember, but just note that when using this, it might have issues. So I wouldn't honestly recommend it if you're going to be using this on a main, but I probably will like select it for this video, obviously. And the accessibility, it does break some of the program. So if you do use accessibility features, absolutely don't select that or you might have problems. Anyways, the configuration I have here is honestly what I recommend because like I said, some of the stuff could break things, you know, and even like this network thing, I would honestly uncheck, but because in on my desktop, I do use ethernet, I don't use Wi-Fi, so it's not really a problem for me. But like I said, login screens buggy, accessibility, if you use that, it might be a problem. Legacy UAC breaks RDP and I use that, so I have to have that unselected and, you know, yeah. But for this video, I'm just gonna check everything, even the task manager. I'm gonna check literally everything because this is not a main system, this is a spare system, and I'm demonstrating for this video. Would I select all this normally? No, I would not because, you know, things break. Anyways, we're gonna transform this right into Windows 7. So I'm gonna click transform and it's going to do its thing. It, do, it did try to make a restore point, but I think it might be turned off. So I would recommend making sure system restore is enabled before doing this, just in case. Then again, there is an option to uninstall the pack, which I would honestly do the uninstall option anyway, if you were to uninstall it. But anyways, I will do a time lapse of this installing, so you guys can watch this install and yeah.
Okay guys, so as you can see, we are back. It left the Windows 10 wallpaper for some reason. Maybe that was a glitch, because I know on mine it changed it to the 7 one, I believe, unless it's... Actually, I think it kept my old wallpaper, but you can see we have this what's new in 7 thing, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna close it. Oh, that's nice. We already have an air message. Um, I have never gotten that air before, so maybe that's just a glitch. I'm just gonna ignore it. But we have a couple of things that we should do here. So we're gonna go to personalize and I'll show you guys that this looks just like Windows 7 and there are different themes. I can select Windows 7 and this will set the wallpaper. So I guess it just kept my previous one, which is probably why it kept the Windows 10 wallpaper after I installed it. There's also a ton of other themes and it does play the sound when you click them, but I don't believe it's transmitting sound on my capture card but you guys can see that you know you could cycle between themes you can go to the next desktop background and it switches themes pretty fast all right i'm back but as you guys can see when switching themes it does it pretty quickly it would normally play the sound but my capture card doesn't have audio so i can't do that however if you switch to like for example the dark theme which i'm not going to do it yet because it does like glitch out a little bit with the tray with this. I notice it glitches this part out, but I will say this. As you guys can see, it still looks like Windows 10, kind of. So I would right click this meet now icon, click hide. After opening settings with Windows key and I, go to personalization, go to taskbar, and then here, if you scroll down, you'll see turn system icons on or off. Use this to disable stuff if you want to di disable the microphone because, you know, that is a Windows 10 thing, but then again, it goes in here anyway, so I'll, I'll just keep it on. I'm going to disable the location, even though, you know, it's a Windows 10 thing. Um, input indicator, and I'm going to obviously disable the Action Center because it did not look like Windows 7 with the Action Center enabled. Now you're probably like, well, I use the Action Center. Well, if you hold Windows key and press A, you can still open up the Action Center and it will open up fine. So you can still do that to access it. So you don't need to worry about not being able to access it. Anyways, I'm gonna change it now to the dark theme. And this does take a little bit of time from what I've noticed. Like it could take up to a minute to two minutes to actually change. So you won't be able to use your computer while it changes. Oh, it changed immediately on here mostly. Okay, maybe it's just something with my computer. But you could see that the dark theme, this is like if Windows 7 had a dark mode, what it could look like. And I'll be honest, I really like this. I think this looks really good. I think it looks really clean as well. And it does glitch with this, however. Maybe it needs a reboot to make it work. I don't know, it tends to glitch out. I, ha I have seen it be fully dark before though. So there is that, but as you guys can see, I can also open the control panel, which I really like this too, because you can actually right click computer and go to properties and it will open the actual like system properties, which I find this pretty cool how you can do this. And you can even rate the system as well. Although this seems broken, so you might have to like rate it another way and then you'll be able to see the rating in here because this tends to not work for me. I don't know why. It even has a Windows update thing. However, you can't update through this like it doesn't work, it'll just crash, but I mean, it does look cool. But like I said, settings works. You could still do Windows updates. Just note that, like I said before, if a Windows update, you know, makes it break a little bit or makes it not work as properly, then you can actually uninstall the pack, which I'll show you guys. So if you use the downloads folder, you need to create a new library there as you have to actually add the downloads folder back because Windows 7 did not have a downloads folder for some reason. So if you use the downloads folder, just do what I'm doing right here in the video to add it back. Now, if I run this again, I'm not gonna actually uninstall it, but I'm just showing you guys, why is this not working, what? Hello? I mean, I don't have access to this. I know I have access to this. Oh yeah, we have the old UAC. If you were to uninstall it, and instead of configure or update, which will change stuff if you decide to change certain things, I notice that this option tends to not work if the pack's broken after an update. You actually have to put revert and remove. I'm not gonna actually do this because I don't wanna remove it on here because I'm actually gonna keep it on this computer for now. 
but that's how you would uninstall it and then afterwards you can reinstall it afterwards. I will say they did a pretty good job even with the dark mode as you know Windows 7 didn't come with one but I think it looks really good however the light mode obviously looks the most accurate. They did also bundle some Windows 7 programs like Windows Media Center and the gadgets and that stuff which I find pretty cool but you guys can play around with it on your own time. I'm not going to show all of it in this video, so yeah. As I said earlier, if a future Windows update breaks anything, just uninstall the pack and then reinstall it if you wish. If it does glitch out uninstalling the pack, you could try rebooting, because I know my screens flashed at one point when I was uninstalling it, but after I rebooted, it seemed fine and continued the uninstall process. However, I think that was just my computer and not the pack itself, as it didn't happen to some others, and it didn't happen to my virtual machine either. But anyways... Oh yeah. And also I can add some more icons. So if I go to change desktop icons, I can add computer and control panel. And I generally like to put them at the very top. I don't know why. I just, I've always been the type of person where I like to put the recycle bin in the corner, like XP, and then just have um, computer and then control panel right below it. I'll say this, this might not be completely accurate like there might be a couple things you might notice that might look a little off but I will say this is the closest you can get and I wouldn't recommend using like custom ISOs because those tend to not have any updates whatsoever and I have tried a couple of them and they also had a lot of bugs and they weren't up to date either and this one you can still update your computer having it installed which is really cool so if I do a Winver you guys could see it actually says it's Windows 7, except obviously the build is still, you know, Windows 10 build. I don't recommend changing that. It breaks other applications. Um, the one on my desktop was just I changed it in the program I was using to say a different build, but it actually isn't. Um, you can see it says Windows 7 Ultimate 21H2 here, which is kind of funny, but other than that, it still has, you know, it has the Windows 10 build and, you know, yeah, so... If you want a Windows 7 look on Windows 10, you could do this, but honestly, if I recommend doing this on a virtual machine or a spare computer, and if you are going to main it, just take those precautions, keep that stuff in mind, be sure to keep the system up to date. If it has an issue, uninstall the pack and reinstall it again, and yeah, pretty much. Like, if you know what you're doing, you can install this on your main computer, but I obviously have to give a disclaimer, if something breaks, I'm not responsible for it. It's kind of a do-at-your-own-risk type of thing. So, yeah, if you really like the 7 look, I would honestly recommend it. It's a really good pack, and the creator did a really good job. So once again, link is in the description to the DeviantArt, and if you're having any trouble or any issues or any questions, leave a comment below either here on the video or even on the DeviantArt. You can leave comments on that too, I believe. So yeah. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and bye-bye for now.